Discovery. How are we doing today? Okay, some people are with us, man. Hey, that was Love Week. We celebrated a couple weeks ago. What an, what an awesome, awesome week. I want to say thank you for those that stepped up and stepped in, got their hands dirty, and served our community so well. We're already looking for next year, uh, but in between, there's, there's, there's opportunity after opportunity to, to get your hands dirty, man, and be the hands and feet of Jesus, and that's what God's called us to be. Uh, not just to come and just be comfortable, but to step out into the uncomfortable, trusting him and being used by him. I believe that's what God's called us to. And, and really, that's what this whole teaching series, our summer teaching series is about. It's about the life of living a life of, of faith. And so we're looking through Hebrews chapter 11. I want to invite you to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. We're teaching verse by verse through Hebrews chapter 11. And we're looking at some incredible examples of faith. We're looking at their lives and how they had such faith in God that he would come through. And we're looking at their obedience of their lives. And we're just saying, Jesus, help us. Help us to have that same kind of faith. Help us to go deeper in in our faith. Help us to not just be okay with where we're at, but help us each day to grow in this faith journey, to trust you, you more, to know you better. And and that's what this, this entire teaching series is about. And so we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7 today. We're going to be looking at the life of Noah. And, uh, and so let's pray before we, before we dive into the scripture right here. Lord Jesus, we thank you for waking us up today, for breathing life into us, for allowing us to gather as your church, to worship you corporately together as your church Lord, to be reminded as we look around that we're not alone, that there's a community here, that you've called us and created us for community. And so, Lord, I pray that that would be experienced here today. I pray that we would encounter you in all your glory, in all your holiness, in all your majesty. May we encounter you for who you are, the God that you really are. Not the God that we think you are or or say you are, but the God that you really are. The creator of the universe. The sustainer of all life. May we encounter you today in a very real way. And Father, may we be changed as we encounter you. Change us. May we just take one one step closer to you. One step closer to knowing you. One step closer and growing in in our faith in you. One step closer living for you. So Lord Jesus, speak. Speak through your word. Your word is alive and active Speak now. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 Let's look at this verse together. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, by faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen and motivated by godly fear, built an ark to deliver his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. You see it in the scripture, just three different times we find the words by faith. We find the title of our series, By Faith. We see it lived out in in Noah and the author under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He he really keys us in on why Noah was able to build the ark in the first place. A couple couple thoughts before we move, move forward here. But by faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen. Let's just press into that just for a moment. What was not yet seen. The Lord said, hey, a flood is coming. A flood is coming. And so in order, I'm going to establish a covenant with you, and and I want you to build this ark. And and so just put yourself in Noah's shoes just for a moment. He's not close to the ocean. They've never experienced a flood. Uh, And God is telling him to go build a massive boat. We're going to see how massive this boat, I mean, it is massive, right? Uh, And so God tells him to go and, and do that. And so by faith, we see that by faith, after he was warned about what was not yet seen, Then we say, and motivated by godly fear. I I love those words. Noah was motivated by godly fear. What does that really mean? I believe that Noah had a perspective uh, of God. And I believe that came out of revelation that he had with God. That, that is, he, he really saw God in all his majesty. We just prayed a moment ago, and those kind of were some of the words. And I, I think 
for, for some of us, we forget how big our God is. We forget how holy he is. We forget how in control he is. And so many times, many of us, if, if we're not careful, I believe this is uh, uh, one of the enemy's greatest game plans is, is to cause us to shrink God. Put him in a box and put him on a shelf and only pull him down when we need him. I believe Noah, though, walked with the Lord, motivated by godly fear. Do you see that? Motivated by godly fear. What does that mean? That word fear, a reverential awe of who God the creator is. And I just wonder, what, what is, who is God to you today? Just, just think about that just for a moment. And don't answer for the person next to you, but just answer personally. Who is God to me today? Like, have, have I forgotten how big my God is? And, and I know, man, we're all going through some stuff, right? You got some stuff that you're walking through, some decisions that you have to make, some needs that are pressing in your lives. And can I just remind you of who the God that we serve, how big he really is? I mean, so many times we forget how big he is. We shrink him down, we put him in a box, we put him on a shelf. But what if we lived each day with a godly fear, reverential awe of who God is? I mean, can we just take it one step further that in any moment, at any moment, this life is over? And who's the God that ordains your days and my days? I mean, just think about that in perspective. So many days, we, we wake up and we're like, I got this God. I'll call you when I need you, right? I'll call you when I, kind of like we're talking to our mom and dad, right? I'll call you when I need you. No, 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 but we desperately need God every moment of every day. We can't do anything. We can't take one step. In him, we live, move, and exist, Acts says, right? And so that's how big our God is. I believe that's how big Noah believed that his God was. Motivated by godly fear, by faith. By faith, Noah built an ark. Do you, do you see that? By faith, Noah built. I believe faith is an action word. Pastor Rowley brought a message last week uh, on Enoch and, and the, the, the whole premise of, of the message. If you are here, if you haven't, go listen online. But the whole premise was faith is, is all about action. There's a response. There's a response that's required through our faith. And, and we see that here. By faith, Noah built and why did he build that? Once again, just I want laying the foundation so we don't miss this. I don't want you to miss this today. He built that ark because he had such a relationship with God that when God spoke, Noah listened. And he didn't just listen, he responded. See, there's a difference. I and mean, we can say all day long, I'm listening to you, God. I'm listening to you, God. I'm listening to you, God. But it's not until faith doesn't kick in, I believe, until we put it into action. Okay, God, I hear you. I'm living for you. I hear you. I'm living this out by faith. No, after he was warned about what was not yet seen and motivated by godly fear, built an ark to deliver his family. Motivated by godly fear. Once again, he had never experienced a flood. All he had was faith in the living God. And I want you to know that there's days that that's all we have. Man, there's days that's all, that's all we got. And can I just tell you and encourage you, that's all we need. See, we're so tangible. I need the tangible. I need to touch and feel like, like doubting Thomas. No, 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 you don't. No, all we need is faith in the living God that what he's called you to, he's going to see you through. Do you believe in the living God? I mean, it's one thing to just think it, but do you really believe it? And how, how do we show the, the result that we believe it? The evidence is by our actions that we're following through. Noah did that. By faith, he goes and builds this massive boat. He builds this, 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 this ark. Noah's faith begot any fear that he may have had. Can I just unpack that just for a moment? I believe that, that all of us at times have an ungodly fear, right? We're stressed. We're freaking out. We don't know how this thing's going to shake. Uh, we have this fear that, man, a fear of rejection, whatever it may be. There's times that we all walk in ungodly fear. But can I just encourage you, change that ungodly fear into a godly fear and then, which will lead to a greater faith. Exchange that ungodly fear into a godly fear. Seeing God for who he really is and how powerful he really is. The creator of all the universe. The sustainer of all life. Let's, let's, let's paint this picture of who God really is. Turning any ungodly fear into a godly fear. And allowing our faith to go deeper to grow stronger. 
I, I believe that we all have room to grow here today. I, I believe that's just one, one truth, one fact of life, that until we meet Jesus face to face, we all have some room to grow. And if you think, man, I don't have any room to grow, can I just tell you, this isn't the place for you. This isn't the community for you because there's no perfect people in this place. There's just no perfect people in this community. We all have room to grow. We all have room to grow. Noah lived a life of faith. When God spoke, he responded. Noah built, by faith, Noah built. And our Craig Rochelle says this, don't let doubts drive you away from God. And so many times we allow the enemy and through these doubts to drive us away from God. He says, don't let doubts drive you away from God. You often have to push through honest doubts to develop strong faith. You have to push through honest doubts to develop strong faith. Can you just imagine with me the doubts that, that, that Noah would have had? I mean, God told him to build this boat. We're going to see here in just a moment how big a boat this is. And can you just imagine the thoughts? What are the people going to think? What are the people going to say? What is my own family going to think? What is my own family going to, to say? I mean, honest doubts. Honest doubts. But he pushes through them to go deeper, to build a stronger faith. And I believe God's calling us to push through those doubts to go deeper in our faith. I see the, 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 the main idea today is this. If you're taking notes, I encourage you to write this down. Think through this and pray through this and live this, live this out. But the main idea today is this. Faith involves, faith involves trusting the maker before the flood. Faith involves trusting the maker before the flood. Most times we're only thinking about the flood. We're only thinking about the big trial and the big challenges. And, and we only ignite our faith in those moments, right? I see it all the time. I'm just going to be honest with you, uh, as, as every pastor should be. Uh, maybe I'm a little more honest than most, but, but that, that's cool. I'm cool with that. I just want you to know I'm cool with that. I own that. Uh, but, but here's the deal. What I often see in the church over 10 years since we planted Discovery Church, what I often see is that through the terrible times, man, people come in. They're crying out to God. They're, they're like, this is all I got. I got nothing else. And I'm like, praise God. You're surrendering over to him. And then once things settle, once the, the waves of the ocean, they just just settled down. What happened to that person? Yeah, man, because they got it. They got it. They don't need God. We put them back on the shelf. And Lord, forgive us in those moments where we say we don't need you by our actions. Amen. And we desperately need him. We desperately, desperately need him each day of our life. Noah developed this, this, this great faith in the one true and living God. Faith involves trusting the maker before, before the flood. Again, I don't know what your flood looks like today. I don't know what, what that big thing, that ginormous thing is that, that you're, you're facing. Uh, 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 but I do know what, one thing that we're facing as a church, as a community of faith. We're facing a ginormous task in, in the next chapter. And, uh, and for those that, that don't know all the details it, or, or even some of the details, uh, we're, we're looking at building uh, on uh, 25th Street, just off Midway Road. And it's been a process. It's been a, it's a major, major process. There's a lot of decisions. There's fee after fee after fee after fee. If you've ever tried to build anything commercial, right? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, you know, the decisions that we have had to make and the decisions that we're praying through. Uh, it's just overwhelming. But I believe that God uh, had already prepared us for what we're walking through and about to even step into uh, as we continue this process. See, it all started, for us, it all started with, we believed and since that God was closing the door uh, here at Savannah Ridge and, and was leading us into a next chapter, uh, our own facility where we could better serve our community and uh, we could continue to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Jesus. And we believe that with everything in us. And so we said, hey, here's what we're going to do. We, 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 we prayed. We believe the Lord's leading us to do this. And so, so here's an amount, $25,000. We're going we're gonna to raise this $25,000. We don't know what comes after that, but we know that that's what God's called us to do. And so we set that out. We set that out before the church. And God, in his, in his grace and his mercy and his provision, man, we, we reached that goal. And after that, we were like, people were looking at us, uh, me and other of our leadership, and they were saying, well, what's next? And we were like, well, we just don't know yet. 
We're like the psalmist. We're waiting patiently on the Lord. And so we waited patiently on the Lord. And, and one day driving down the road, we saw this piece of property right around the corner. And we said, man, I, I believe that the Lord is, is, is calling us to move forward with some property. And, and so we begin that process. We had a church meeting, church meeting, and, and, and we cast the vision. Many of you were there for that. And we said, God's calling us to the next chapter and here's the property and we're moving forward. And, and so we began to step forward in that by, by faith, we stepped forward in that. And, and, and then guess what? It wasn't that property. It wasn't that property. God shut that property door. He shut that door. But that same day that he shut that door, he opened another door. He opened the door off the of 25th, which for anyone that's been out there uh, knows it's, it's such a better door. <laughs> and isn't that God's plan? God's plans are bigger and better than our plans could ever be. But it's this, it's this truth of stepping forward in faith, living a life by faith. God's saying, hey, I'm calling you to this. And so, Lord, I, I, don't, I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the money. I mean, could you just imagine the materials? Uh, just imagine what it would take, would have taken for Noah to build this thing. But by faith, Hebrews 11 says, by faith, Noah built an ark. Again, his life before the ark. I believe and we, we see it in Genesis 6. We're going to see it here in just a moment. But in Genesis 6, Noah walked closely with the Lord. He developed that faith in the one true and living God. And, and, and so Noah believed in God in his ordinary life. Noah believed in God in his everyday life. Before the great test came, Noah believed in God. And what does your life look like right now? What is your belief in God? What is your, where does your faith lie in God? And the question to ask and consider today, all of us is, have you faith in God? Have you faith in God? Charles Spurgeon says, it is a great thing to have faith in the presence of a terrible trial. But the first essential is to have faith for ordinary, everyday consumption. So what does it look like each day that we wake up? What, what does the faith look like in your life and in my life? Have you faith in your daily bread? I got them, I, 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 I'm awake today. You, 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 you woke me up today. You've given me a strength to go work. You're going to provide that meal. I mean, what does it look like? I'm so thankful for parents that instilled uh, uh, to, to us children, me and, and my siblings, the importance of thanking God for every meal. They weren't teaching us a ritual. They were teaching us to be thankful. So every time food is placed in front of us as children, we, we prayed and we thank God for that, for that food. But how many times in our own lives do we just think, you know what, you know, by our actions, we, we, don't, we don't need you, God. We don't need you, God. Have we lost sight of the desperate need for God? Thanking him for every provision, even the food that we eat, the clothes that we wear. Thank you, God, for your goodness in my life. Parents, can I just encourage you to do that? Can I encourage you to teach your children the importance of thanking God for every provision? Thanking God for every provision. Uh, so many times we just go to the big things and we miss the small things, but we need them in all things, right? We need them in all things. Thank you, God, for this daily provision. Have you faith in God uh, as to your children and your home? Have you faith in God that he's going to come through whatever the need is that your child has? Maybe some of you, maybe some of you, you, you have prodigal children that they've strayed off and have your faith in God and crying out to God, bring them home, bring them home. And are you ready? Are you waiting with open arms, with forgiveness and love, looking at God as the example? Have you faith about what God's called you to, your, your vocation, your business. Many times we just, we live a life of stress and anxiety. And, and I believe that God has called us to turn that into worship of him, worship of the living God. Philippians 4 is so clear. It's so clear. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Thank him for all that he's done. Trust him. And what is the result? Verse 7 says, the peace of God that passes all understanding peace of God. As we surrender, as we surrender whatever's weighing us down, whatever's worrying over to him, he replaces it with a peace. And somehow, supernaturally, he provides what we need. 
You think about that last time. I mean, you really prayed through this thing and God provided what you need, what you needed. You think about that just for a moment. Allow that to encourage you for the next that's coming. The next that's coming, it's going deeper in faith. Have your faith in God for all that you need. Last quote by, by Charles Spurgeon. Faith will not come to you all of a sudden in the dark night if you have shut it out through all the bright days. Faith must be a constant tenant, not an occasional guest. Faith is to be exercised upon the promises of God. If we doubt God's word about one thing, we will have small confidence in it upon another. Sincere faith in God must treat all God's word alike. For the faith which accepts one word of God and rejects another is evidently not faith in God, but faith in our own judgment, faith in ourselves. And so the question again, do you have faith in self or do you have faith in the Savior? Is your faith today just lying on who you are or is it lying on who he is? Can I just encourage you and just save you from some more turmoil in your life? Have faith in who he is. Man, surrender over to his sovereignty, his strength, his goodness. Do you have faith in yourself today or do you have faith in the Savior today? Where does your faith lie in order for Noah to fulfill the call of God on his life. And he had to have faith. He had to have faith in God. By faith, again, by faith, verse seven, by faith, Noah, what? Built. Noah built an ark. Listen, when God honoring fear is grafted upon God honoring faith, it brings forth God honoring fruit. Don't miss that. I want you to think about that. Write that down. Let that be just an encouragement to you today. When God-honoring fear, when we exchange ungodly fear for a godly fear, when God-honoring fear, God, this is who you are. You are completely worthy. When God-honoring fear is grafted upon God-honoring faith, I'm going to trust you no matter what. I can't see. I can't see it, but I'm going to trust you. When God-honoring fear is grafted upon God-honoring faith, it brings forth God-honoring fruit. There's a difference. Follower of Christ, listen, there's a big difference. It's one thing to just proclaim, man, I, I, and just say I'm a Christian, but it's a whole other thing to live it. I believe we've got a lot of fakes just walking around. We've got a lot of fakes just walking around. We need followers of Jesus that are sincere followers of Jesus that are living by faith, that when people see you, they're, they're seeing something different about you and about me. When God uttering fear, is grafted upon God-honoring faith. It brings forth God-honoring fruit. Faith involves trusting the maker before the flood. And so quickly, how do we develop? How do we develop faith before the flood? Now, now some of you are in the middle of the flood. Uh, this still is applicable, can I just tell you? It, this is applicable because after this flood, I got some bad news, but I got some good news. Don't, don't go anywhere. I got some bad news, but I got some good news. There's gonna be another flood. But the same God that's walking with you in this flood is going to be the same God that's going to walk with you in the next flood. That's the good news. That's the good news. Genesis chapter 6. Look at Genesis chapter 6. It's on the screen. I encourage you to write this, write this reference down. Go back to Scripture and dig into Scripture personally. Don't just take my word for it to be truth. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man the only blameless person living on earth at the time. And he walked in close fellowship with God. Do you see that? He walked in close fellowship with God. How do we develop faith before the flood? Walk in closely. Walk closely with the Lord. Walk closely with the Lord. Now, most of us know this, but it's a whole other thing to have the knowledge uh, and to not practice can I just encourage you, lovingly encourage you, follower of Christ, church, begin to practice walking closely with the Lord. It's in those moments that it's just you and him that he's speaking and that you're gaining the strength and the faith because you've heard him speak, because you've gotten to know him, you've spent some time with him. You're walking closely with him and you're saying, God, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. 
I want to do whatever you want me to do. We see that. We see that in Genesis 6-9 here. We see a couple things about Noah. One is that Noah is the first person in the scriptures to be called righteous. And it came again out of the fellowship with God. The second, we know that in 2 Peter uh, chapter 2, Peter calls himself the preacher of righteousness. Noah was a man of God, a man of faith. He walked in faith. He didn't just talk about faith. He walked in faith. He believed God. He took God at his word. Noah walked with the Lord closely. We move forward by walking closely with the Lord. We move forward in faith by walking closely with the Lord. How do you develop faith before the flood? Second, you obey the Lord carefully. You walk closely with him, and then you obey him carefully. You don't try to add anything to what he's already spoken. You just, you just obey him. He tells you to do it, you just do it. We see that in, with Noah. He obeyed God. Look at chapter 6, verse 14. Chapter 6, verse 14. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark. Cover it with pitch inside and outside. Verse 15, this is how you are able to make it. The ark will be 450 feet long. Massive, right? Massive. 450 feet long. The building we're building, just a little perspective, is 135 feet long. Just a little perspective. So go out there and you can walk the rest of it and just really get a picture of how big this thing was that God was calling him to build, right? Uh, 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet tall. You are to make a roof, finishing the sides of the ark to within 18 inches of the roof. You are to put a door in the side of the ark. Make it with lower, middle, and upper decks. Understand that I am bringing a flood, flood waters on the earth to destroy every creature under heaven with the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you. Verse 18, I will establish my covenant with you. And you will enter the ark with your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives. You are also to bring into the ark two of all the living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two, verse 22, of everything from the birds according to their kinds, from the livestock according to their kinds, and from the animals that crawl on the ground according to their kinds will come to you so that you can keep them alive. Take with you every kind of food that is eaten. Gather it as food for you and for them. Verse 22. And and Noah, so Noah did this. He did everything that God had commanded him. Did you see that? Noah did it. He obeyed God carefully. He obeyed God carefully. He didn't sit there and argue with God. He didn't question God. He obeyed God carefully. I believe he was able to obey God carefully because the time that he spent walking with God closely. And what does that look like for you? Can I just, again, just just take another step out here and just say in love and humility and grace, if that you're just waiting once a week on a Sunday to spend time with the Lord, You're missing it. You're missing it. I believe that God is calling us each day to spend time with him. To spend time growing uh, in our faith with him. To spend time praying to him. To to spend time reading his word. To spend time asking God, what is your word saying to me? How are you calling me to live it out? Who are you calling me to speak to? Noah. Noah developed his faith well before the flood. A lot of times when we think about this, this, this biblical narrative, we, we, we only think about the flood, right? We go straight for the flood and, and we don't think about before the flood, the preparation that took place before the flood. And, and again, I just want to press in and just encourage you to grow your faith right here, right now. No matter where you're at, to grow your faith, to go deeper in your faith with the Lord, to walk closely with the Lord 
and to obey him carefully. Faith involves trusting the maker before the flood, before the flood. I believe these past 10 years have allowed us to develop that kind of faith to step out in obedience and trust God for his supernatural provisions, to trust God for the next 10 years. I believe that God has done something really sweet in these first 10 years of Discovery's life. Preparation for the next 10. We say it often, and I believe it, I do, that the best is yet to come. And I just want to wonder what it looks like in your own personal life, though, to go deeper in faith. What does it look like to spend time with Jesus? Would you bow your heads and would you close your eyes all across this place? Those that are online, would you just, would you just do this with us just for a moment? Just ask God right where you're at. Just ask him. Lord, what does my life look like when it comes to spending time with you? Lord, I want to walk closer to you. And I want to obey you. something right now in your heart that you know that God has called you to and you're allowing ungodly fear to hold you back from, from stepping out on faith? And can I just encourage you to surrender? Would you surrender that right now, right here, right now? Would you surrender whatever that is, whatever that ungodly, whatever that ungodly fear is? Would you just surrender it right here, right now, all across this room? A deeper faith in God? Just tell him, Lord, I want to go deeper in my faith with you. I want to know you like I've never known you before. And so I surrender over to you. Right here, right now, I surrender over to you. Maybe there's someone here today that you've, you've, never, you've never sought the Lord for salvation and you're just saying, hey, Tim, if, if I were to, to die here today, I, I don't know where I would spend eternity. And can I just encourage you that according to the authority of God's word that you can know with confidence, whoever calls upon me will be saved. Listen, it's not about your righteousness. It's not about your good works. It's about the righteousness of Jesus. It's about the good works and finished works of Jesus. Listen, here's the gospel. If you're praying, you just continue to pray right where you're at. You just continue to spend time with Jesus. Something weighing you down, spend time with Jesus. Don't miss this opportunity. But if you don't know, you don't have confidence today in Jesus, listen to me. I want you to know that God so loved the world that he gave, that he gave his one and only son, that Jesus came. Over 2,000 years ago, he walked this earth. He was crucified on a cross. He was placed in a grave and he rose victorious from that grave. For you, for me, for all humanity. He did it for us. He did it to set us free. He did it to Forgive us. He did it to provide heaven. And if you're struggling with that, you're wrestling with that right here, right now, would you just cry out to him, dear Jesus, right now, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I need you today to forgive me, to save me, to set me free. I trust in you. I believe that you came, that you died, that you rose again. And I, I trust in you. I follow you today. Would you just thank him all across this place? If that's your prayer today, would you just thank him for saving you and for setting you free? And after all this is over, 
Can I just encourage you, find me, find one of our home team, go to the VIP tent and say, look, today I surrendered my life over to Jesus. And I want to know more about what is my next step? What does it look like? What, what should I do next? I want to know, would you find us? Would you find us? So Father, we, we humbly come before you, thanking you for the reminder of your word to go deeper in faith to go deeper in faith, to develop the faith before the flood. Lord, I pray that all of us collectively, that we would walk closely with you, that we would obey you carefully, that we would be known as men and women of faith in the one true and living God. And so we thank you, we praise you, we ask this all, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. Amen and amen.